Hey everybody, my name is Swade, and today we're going to be doing another overexplain game. So this time we're going to be doing it on an archipelago map. So the thing about archipelago maps is that they are, on paper, human favored. Like, if you play optimally, it'll be easier to beat the AI on an archipelago map than on Pangea or Continents. But the difficulty curve is a bit steeper. So I notice that when I look at your save files, a lot of you guys struggle on archipelago maps with expansion. You guys struggle with uh, commerce. And also you struggle with trade. So I thought that I could do an overexplain game where I explain things that normally I would overlook or that I've said before a million times, but I'll say them again, that kind of stuff. So you guys know all my thoughts as I play the, through this kind of uh, game. Okay, so we're gonna be playing on Regent. This is not a challenging video for me whatsoever. If you would like uh, to see something where I'm doing something more difficult, I would gesture you over here. Obviously, you can't actually see me, but if you could, you would see that I'm gesturing wildly towards every single other video on this channel. But this one is going to be on an easy difficulty, just so I can focus on the, the core of the game. Okay, uh, so we're going to be playing as India. These are two mid-game, late-game traits that don't impact the early game too much, and they have a, a medieval-era UU uh, that is a unique unit, if you don't know. So uh, what this means is that the set we have chosen will not change the way we play the early game in any way. The, the only thing that you could possibly argue would be the case there would be um, we start with alphabet. That makes definitely helps with uh, archipelago maps, uh, but the traits themselves won't really help. So we spawn with this hut. So on high difficulty levels, you actually want to plant a city next to the hut if possible. I would say that this would be a great choice for a city because it would pop the hut out of automatic automatically, and then we don't get barbarians, right? If we plant the city here on SID difficulty, our borders expand, we get barbarians, like 90% of the time percent of the time on high difficulty levels, you'll get barbarians. The barbarians are tougher on high difficulty levels, and it will just ruin your day. So you'd want to plant next to the city, or next to the hut, because then you can't get uh, barbarians. But uh, that's not quite true on low difficulty levels. You can probably try to cheese, this, like, because you can't pop a settler, right? If you plant a city right next to the the hut, you can't get a settler and you can't get a city from that kind of stuff. Uh, so on low difficulty levels, what I'd probably do is I'd intentionally plant away from the hut just so I have that 11% chance or whatever it is of getting the free settler. If there's barbs, they're not as tough on low difficulty levels, so we'd be able to deal with them. So yeah, right now what I'm seeing is we have two main options for, for city placements. I'm seeing here and here. So it's okay to plant on bonus grasslands if you need to, but uh, it's not optimal. Uh, not ideal. It, it slows down the early game a bit. Because uh, you don't get the, the bonus shield from the tile until you hit size 7, which will be a, a long time. So uh, these are both coastal spots. I'm not considering something like this because it's not coastal. This would also be on a river. That's interesting. Um, but I'd have to walk 2 for the river here. If you want to check if there's a river, just right click and see, am I getting bonus commerce here? So this mountain is plus 1 gold because it's on a river. Um, so yeah, if you're not sure, what you can do is you can move the worker. So this one would be able to see, yeah, this gives us much clearer picture here. Uh, so this one would be popping the hut. So I'm going to go for the one away from the hut. So that's this one here. So we got a few bonus grasslands. This is a pretty standard start on an archipelago map. I like to think that grassland with some bonus grasslands is pretty standard. On Pangea or Continents map, you're more likely to get rivers. Uh, or lakes too, I guess. And rivers give bonus commerce, but you don't get those in Archipelago, so the, the commerce situation will be a little bit slower. But that's okay, because it's it's even across all sieves. The people who spawn on big islands uh, with, with rivers probably spawn next to other sieves, and that slows them down in other ways. So it kind of balances out. Fantastic. Okay, so the first thing we do with our worker is we mine. You always mine before you road. Because the value of a shield is... I mean, you don't always do it. it Depends on the circumstances, of course. If you had, like, I don't know, a plains cow and there was no river so you couldn't irrigate, I, I'd road that because you'd lose the, the shield to the, the despotism penalty in that case. But with a, a standard bonus grassland start, then you just do this. You mine first. Because the, the shield is worth a lot more than the commerce. Uh, so, five turns for warrior... Um... Normally I'd open Kura here, but here we're going to do... We're going to get the hut because we want the... Oh, we'll get the hut in 10 turns anyway. Wait, hold the phone. Okay, fun fact. So you cannot pop barbarians from a hut if you don't have any military units. Uh, if, if you're curious, your king actually does count as a military unit if you're playing regicide, especially in multiplayer. Uh, but in a single-player game, yeah, as long as we don't build a warrior, I'm, I'm not sure... I think naval units don't count. 
no, you don't open temple. You never open temple. Uh, we'll get this in 10 turns. Barracks is kind of a crap opening. We could... How long would it take for pottery? 16 turns? Um, Maybe I should have roaded first. <laughs> yeah, let's open, uh, let's open Gran. I, I don't... Normally, I, I wouldn't recommend opening Gran at all. But specifically here, because it gives us better hot results... I think it pays off. Okay, um, we're actually... Yeah, the reason... Here, now we get the this. Uh, so fun thing I've learned from the multiplayer community, actually. I'll show you guys after this. Okay, it only gives us gold, but that's fine. Barracks in five, pottery in five. Uh, we can do that. Okay. Yeah, so that gives us pottery in four. So by, by roading, we increase our commerce. That gets us pottery faster. We, we don't want to finish the barracks before we... The idea here is we switch from the barracks to the granary. Uh, and we're able to start building the granary before we actually unlock the tech by doing this. Uh, but we can't let it finish, right? And we don't have any more expensive buildings. Like, once we finish the barracks, we, we have nowhere else for our shields to go. This is done in... Okay, yeah, it's not gonna... Okay, here's pottery. Now we'll do stuff. So we in almost always you want to do middle text. There are some exceptions, like if you're going for a swordsman rush, you might want to do iron working. If you're Egypt, you might want to do the wheel. But generally, these are the best trading texts. And if you get philosophy first, which if you if you focus for it, you almost always should on low difficulty levels. If you get philosophy first, then that will give you a free tech. Yeah. So barbarians will spawn once. Oh, uh, that should probably finish before we grow. Barbarians spawn once the average number of cities on the map is equal to two, or give or take a bit. On high difficult levels, that'll happen quite quickly. On low difficult levels, that's pretty slow, right? So we don't have to worry about barbarians just yet. Uh, nice, okay. So if the granary and the growth happen on the same turn, then you don't actually get the bonus food from that round of growth for the granary. Because remember, the granary gives you extra food 10 food, which is a really big bonus every time you grow. But you have to complete it the turn before you grow, otherwise you don't get the food. Sometimes there's cases where you actually want to slow down your growth. Uh, and it'll give you more food by doing that, because then the granary finishes before you grow. And then you get the bonus food. Okay, yeah, so like I said, I don't like the one city granary. The only way the one city granary opening pays off is if you build no warriors, and then you go straight into settler pretty much. Uh, I guess if you like needed to chop anyway, it might it might make sense. But the downside here is we don't really know where to put our second city. Um, let's put it down here. So we hit size three. We adjust the happiness slider. Right. If we use the entertainer, we lose two food. I guess we'd get some commerce back, but we lose two food and a shield. Slowing down our growth, like at this phase of the game, techs don't do. What what the heck does getting writing faster do for us? We're gonna be fine for tech. Getting writing faster, what, are we going to build some embassies? No, it doesn't do shit for us. But having more cities, or having more food will allow us to get more cities, more workers, which in turn increases our commerce, increases our food, and increases our production. So it has, there are material benefits associated with working this tile, whereas the commerce doesn't really do much. And, and just generally commerce is less valuable than food and shields. So in this case, a very easy decision. Use the happiness slider. Do not use entertainers, especially in the early game. In, unless the city's corrupt, you shouldn't be using entertainer. I mean, you've done something wrong if you're using an entertainer. In some cases, if you like accidentally run into very bad war weariness, where it's like, okay, this is the, the the least of the bad options, but just recognize that you've do, done something wrong and think, was there something I could have done to to prevent this? Okay, uh, so this city is going to start growing really fast because it's got a granary. Uh, we're going to squeeze out the Kura here again. Until the average number of cities on the map is equal to two, it shouldn't be an issue uh, with barbs. So we can just have our settlers be naked. Uh, the downside is I haven't scouted now, so I don't know if there's any bonus or, or anything here. If it's just plain grassland, that's, that's kind of a crappy city. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll do four away. We, if you want to micro this, you can turn this off. The, the happiness slider. 
Ooh, okay, if we plant this here, we can actually flex this tile. So what I mean by flexing is that we could just do this. We'd lose a commerce, but we'd get the, the worked bonus grassland tile in our second city. So that'd be quite good. But because we have the granary here, Delhi's going to grow quite fast, and it will need these worked tiles. So we can plant a little further away. I like to say that three to four tiles is the, the ideal distance from your capital that you should be planting cities. Uh, if you're doing like an early game military rush or you really need unit support, sometimes you can do tighter. Or if you're playing like a very big map uh, or if you have a lot of space, you can sometimes do looser or if you have bad land. Uh, but generally three to four is that sweet spot. I like, I like to do four if uh, all things are equal, but, but don't, don't be scared at all of doing three. And definitely don't do more than five because then you start wasting tiles. Okay, so we're in the top right corner of the map. What this means is that if we scout this way... We're probably not going to run into any other islands, so we're going to scout towards the south, even though we've already explored in this direction. Okay, at this phase, I'm going to get the warrior out. Oh crap, I forgot to switch back here. No palace minigame, that, that's one thing I can't over-explain. Uh, so the warrior will allow us to scout up, up north, that's the idea with the warrior here. So in Bombay, the second shield is uncorrupted. We have two shields per turn, so if we want, we can do warrior and then settler. Or we can do warrior and then worker. If the shield was corrupt, we'd just go straight for the worker. Uh, I'll explain a little bit more about that later, but for now, that's that's all you need to know. Okay. Um, hmm. Let's do this, and then we can work our way up that way, and then we have the option of, of eroding south later if we want to. So you might be tempted, oh, I want to work the best tile possible and go straight for the bonus grassland. No, don't do that. That's bad. So you don't want to waste worker moves, if at all possible. So if any time your worker does not enter... Oh, a cow. Okay, we're definitely going settler then. Anytime your worker does not do a move like mining or eroding or is not working to a tile where a worker has never been before, then you have wasted a worker move. So if you work two, walk two workers to the same tile, that's wasting a worker move. If you walk here and then walk here and you don't work the tile, that's wasting a worker move. Oh, sorry, you have to walk to the new tile and then you have to work the tile. Okay, this is gar- we have actually garbage land. Okay, I'm proud I get to show you guys this, because garbage land is honestly more interesting. Boring land pretty much just runs on autopilot. You can just automate your workers and then use the tile that the city gives for you and there's no issue, but with bad land, you- you benefit a lot from being creative. Uh, hmm. So we'll go, yeah, Settler there. That's a good option. And Warrior. Yeah, so once you start playing on Emperor, you start running into unhappiness once you hit size 2. We can actually bring this up here. So the third shield should probably be Corrupt here. So this will finish in exactly 15 turns, which is exactly when we'll grow to size 3, which is ideal. Ideally, you should be getting your settlers out as soon as possible, unless there's a very good reason not to in the early game. You want to be expanding fast, so that means um, building your settlers as soon as you hit size 3, because the settler consumes two population points. Oh yeah, so we'd have to leave the warrior here if we were doing if we were on emperor or higher, because the city would become unhappy once it hits size 2. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why the worker is so good if the second shield is corrupted. Uh, because if the second shield is corrupted, you only have enough time for one warrior, and you'll hit size 3 before you finish the settler, right? And then you'll run into ha unhappiness again. And because this is a corrupt city, like by definition, the corrupt cities are corrupt cities, and you probably don't have a lot of worked tiles, um, you don't have a lot of commerce, and what that means is that the happiness slider isn't as efficient in these faraway cities as it is in your cap. So it's more important to be using military police there. Counterintuitively, it's often better to just leave your capital city empty in the early game and defend the, the other cities. Because the capital city has the highest commerce. Look, you get just bonus commerce here. You don't get bonus commerce here. And these tiles are unworked. We haven't used a worker to improve them. So our capital actually has more commerce. So it's more efficient to use the happiness slider there. Because if we try to like if we try to get this citizen to be happy, look how much gold that costs us in our capital. Uh, we would lose. Or four gold. I guess only three, because we, we'd need a low level anyway. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it's very expensive. 
Yeah, so the happiness slider is a work of art. It's incredibly useful. The downside is you have to set one uniform rate across your empire. So if you try to make a very corrupt city happy using the happiness slider, you're going to waste a lot of commerce in those other cities that, uh, that aren't corrupt because those cities with the extra uncorrupted commerce are already, already happy with a low rate of the uh, happiness slider. Okay, we have barbarians now on the map. You'll see that. Uh, so we do have to be careful of warriors. So this one's going here. This is on a lake. Uh, I guess on the border expand, it'll get us to the dyes. The dyes aren't a super high priority. As you see, we're managing, especially on low difficulty levels, we're managing happiness quite efficiently without the use of, with just the happiness slider and military police. Um... So in this case, we don't really benefit a lot. This is a kind of a crummy city. Uh, we just generally do not have good expansion opportunities right here. So we're going to do the Kura for trade. Uh, normally, I'd say that it's higher priority to get out the, the city. But but here, I think it's more priority to get out the Kurag to meet our neighbors and start trading texts with them. So the same things that applied in the previous overexplained videos uh, apply here. Trading text is very, very useful. And for that reason, you want to contact people as fast as possible. So this is one of the advantages that the human player actually has on, on well, any difficulty level against over the AI, I guess, is that the AI will just stay at home. The human player, if they know how to, will go out and scout the map and meet all the other AI civs. The AI doesn't really prioritize meeting other civs. They do, they explore not really navally so much, and they, they settle. They're good at those two things, but they don't intentionally go out to meet other sims. They certainly won't suicide their boat, which the human player, if they're good, will do. Okay, um, we did, did we do warrior? Yeah, so we have... Nice, okay, this is still uncorrupted. Is Does that corrupt the sh... If it, if it did, we didn't notice. Because uh, we have three shields now anyway. One, two, three, four. Uh, no, these are equal distance from the cap. I think this one might actually be prioritized. Sorry, I'm just seeing which one is the, the more corrupt city of the two. But either way, this we still have two uncorrupted shields. So again, the same thing that applied in Bombay applies in Madras now. Uh, oh, okay, I can show you some, some barb micro. So if we go here, if you are immediately northwest or immediately southeast of a barbarian, they will attack you. Unless there's like a, a naked worker or something directly, like within one turn of the barb. Okay, now we work our way up here. Yep, he attacks as predicted. Uh, weed cities are good, but this is this volcano. So volcanoes, they, they trigger. There's a few things in Civ that trigger based on year and not based on the turn. And volcanoes is one of them. So what that means in practice is that as time passes, volcano volcanic explosions will happen less and less. Because in early in the game, one year is forty, or one turn is forty years. Later in the game, one turn is one year. Uh, so I, if I'm not mistaken, it would be forty times more likely for the volcano to trigger early game than at the end of the game. So basically, if we wait to plant that city, the risk of the volcano is not that bad. Uh, but if we plant it soon, then there, there's a real chance the volcano will go off. Uh, so this is tough here, because we, we want a coastal city, but we also... Um, we want to be on the river, right? And we want to get these grassland tiles. If we plant here, we don't get the grassland tiles. Oh, I guess we could flex this. That's not so bad, actually, because we have plenty of worked tiles in our cap. Okay, but what I'm thinking is we, we plant one here, and then we plant one here. So yeah, you kind of got to get creative with, with bad lands. Like, how can I make the city usable? So this city is usable because we instantly get three grassland tiles. We'll have one more. Yeah, just three. That will at least let us get to size seven, right? Size seven is such an important size, because in Republic, you get effectively four extra gold per turn. Uh, being commercial, I think that gives us an extra three gold per turn from being size seven. Because you get, uh, for cities size seven and up, you get bonus commerce for being commercial in your city center. So there's a lot of reasons to want size seven cities. So we want cities on freshwater, and we want cities that can actually grow, even though the land is kind of crappy. 
So if we just irrigate, yeah, this is four tiles. If we irrigate these, no issue. We can even probably mine one of them. Uh, and then once we get railroads, this can probably grow to size 12 or so, which is quite good. This city over here, uh, can, it can flex these tiles. So it can use these two grassland tiles. It, it could use these ones, but that would be taking them away from the other city. But more importantly, it's, it's coastal, right? So we can just build a harbor, and that allows you to grow until you run out of sea or ocean or coast tiles. Kind of gets the gold, right? It's hard to get the gold, right? Because gold uses a lot of food. Like, it doesn't give any food, right? So it just instantly, like, imagine if we were working on gold here, we would just have no surplus food and we'd stop growing. Uh, but that, that it's possible to get this, because if we irrigate these tiles, we can get the food um, that we need. Uh, the trick, though, is that you can't really, you don't benefit from irrigating grasslands as long as you're in despotism. So because I'm still in despotism, this is not a high-priority city, because it's... Oh, I, I guess actually technically it is. So weirdly, very short term it's better. In the midterm, this one is better. Uh, but in, in the long term, this one is, is also quite good too. So the reason for that is if we plant this one, then we can't flex this tile. So I'm going to prioritize doing that. Okay, um, more Kurags, Kurags. On an eight-player map, probably two Kurags is enough. If you have extra production, go for a third. Feel free. Uh, but because I got the, the growth from the granary, I'm, I'm not sweating too hard here. Notice I'm not doing a granary in Bombay, and I'm not doing one in Madras. There's two reasons for that. The first is that would take absolutely forever. The second reason is we're almost done the expansion. I don't know how much is here, I guess, but there's not a lot of good land left for us to plant. Um, so generally like, what I like to say is for every eight or nine cities that you end up with at the end of the game, you should have built one granary during the expansion phase. So if there's enough room for 20, 24 cities or so, you could probably use three granaries. Here I'd say, what, seven good cities and then maybe maybe some islands? The islands are, are delayed, though, so it's okay if you don't have the growth up front. Uh, so yeah, for that reason, I think um, we don't really need a second granary here. Just one granary is absolutely fine. Okay, continuing to scout. There's actually another hut here, um, but we're, there's no way we're going to get a settler from this. I'm actually going to save the hut. So if you look at our population, we're, oh, we're actually, yeah, you can't pop a settler while you have a settler active or in construction. So based on just owning the city or the settler, we can't pop a settler from this hut. And if we plant this, then we have an above average number of um, of settlers, or sorry, of cities, right? To be able to pop a city from a hut, you have to have an average or above average number of cities. Sorry, average or below average number of cities. At this point, we're well above average, certainly, so uh, we can't get a settler here. We could get gold. Gold would be fantastic. I wouldn't complain about gold. We could also get techs, but techs aren't really quite ideal right now because we haven't traded with anyone yet. If we get a tech, we're going to get bronze working or mysticism or something like that. Which, once we meet people, we could very easily trade for, but we haven't met anyone yet. So what we're going to do is wait until after we meet people, and then we're going to pop, pop that hut. Okay, on high difficulty levels, you probably wouldn't want to mess with this, because you'd be just giving up a warrior. But on low difficulty levels, it's, it's worth uh, You have like a 80% chance of winning, so that's okay. Okay, let's just grab the settler. Uh, let's do the crack here. So this has the extra production. Oh, it actually has three uncorrupted shields. Ah, this is actually the least corrupt city in our cow in our empire, aside from our capital. Uh, because it's three away from our cap, and it's not four away. So it has lower distance corruption, and also has lower rank corruption. Because of all the cities in my empire, it is the closest to my capital. So it gets the lowest ranks corruption spot. Okay, at this point, we're going to start needing workers. I got by as far as I could without them. Oops, that's the wrong direction. We're just going to leave this guy here, watch for barbs, uh, protect any settlers we send out. And we're going to meet the Iroquois. Okay, we have ceremonial burial. You take what you can get. 
pay the money if you have to. I will easily pay the money. Uh, we're going to get writing in two. Oh, uh, you know what? F fuck him. Uh, I don't care too much. We can get everything for writing later on. Okay, uh, so this is a bit of a liability, <laughs> I guess, technically, because uh, there could be barbs on that tile, so I'll keep my eyes open. Uh, but normally where there's one sieve, there's, there's more likely to be another sieve, so we'll keep looking. Uh, certainly going south is likely to yield something like that. Okay, philosophy. Okay, aren't we glad we didn't plant that city next? Oh, we probably wouldn't have at this point, but... Okay, so in terms of tundra planting, so you cluster, like, you put your cities around where they can reach high-growth tiles. So you want to plant on, like, the edge of the tundra. So notice how that's what I did here in Madras. That's what I did in... Kind of what I did. I, I wanted to plant on the river, right? And this would be two apart. Uh, but it's almost what I did in Bangalore. And that's what I'm planning to do in this city spot. If there's no edge of the tundra, what you do is you plant on the coast. So I plant here. I'll plant here. Uh, ooh, there's... I, I, I plant here to get the extra sea tiles, but this one actually gives me the, the game right away. And you plant loose on the tundra, too. Yeah, so at this point, we start doing worker. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is our expansion phase is actually going to be kind of blocked by the, the lack of good land to, to plant on, I guess. So we're going to go for map making. Normally I might go for literature, or maybe I do the, the slingshot where you go code of law into philosophy and then get republic as the free tech. I'll do map making here so I can quickly nab this island before the Iroquois get there. And this one seems to be completely free. So this is a mistake I see a lot in your games that you guys just, even on archipelago maps, you don't explore at all. See, like once you send some boats into the water, it's very clear that they're empty islands. And so it's just natural that you want to plant them. If you don't scout, you won't see these islands. If you don't see these islands, you won't have the, the driving urge to, I don't know, force yourself into the wilderness and found a civilization, I don't know, all that crap. Uh, so on archipelago maps, this isn't quite as common, but I see this a ton on continents maps. So on continents maps, by the time you're like most of the way down the expansion phase, just build a boat, a carag or a galley, and just look around, see if there's any like... So if you see these sea, tile, sea lanes right here, sometimes these just lead absolutely nowhere, but sometimes they will lead to an island. And if you see the island, then you can plant the island before the AI gets there. Too often I see you guys just concede every single island city on the map to the AI. Because the AI, like I said, they're good at expansion. They will get these island city spots if you don't get them quick. Uh, so on island maps and archipelago maps, definitely prioritize that. Okay. Uh, so I'm wondering if I should just uh, bite the bullet and sell something to the Iroquois. We'll do this tile that Madras can actually... It's not... Ideally, you want to work tiles that would, like, hook Madras up, like one of these two. But if we chop here... So if we road the forest, that wastes worker moves, right? Because it's easier to chop the forest first and then road, because roading over grassland is faster. Uh, but on if we, if we chop here, then the shields will get wasted, right? Because we're growing an 8, and the settlers complete an 8. So in this case, it's better not to connect the cities. But we want to still work a tile that one of our cities will benefit from. So Delhi, at, at the present moment, has all the tiles that it needs. Uh, but Madras doesn't, right? It's using this lake instead of a, a worked uh, grassland tile. Okay, you know what? I think if the Iroquois have like a third tech to offer me... They don't. Okay, I'll, I'll wait, I guess. Worst case, they'll get ceremonial burial. They're not going to go for writing. I know the text that the AI prioritize, and it's very unlikely that they do writing. Okay, at this point, we don't really have a logical place to send our settler. So it's better to go for... Oh, okay, we, our patience was rewarded.
So when I did the, the first over explained video, I got a ton of comments being like, hey, uh, you, can you do a part two? Like I was completely done the expansion phase, but people still wanted a part two. I think people like over explained games, uh, but sadly I didn't, it was just supposed to be the expansion phase. I didn't hold on to the save file. Oh, he is writing. Okay. So yeah, this time I'll, I'll hold on to the save file. Don't worry. And I'll, I'll, the expansion phase lasts a little longer on Archipelago maps, but if you guys want, I can go beyond the expansion phase here too. Okay. Um, so yeah, these are two garbage texts, so absolutely no um, reservations about giving them away. The thing I noticed, though, is that he has writing, right? So that means it's our cue that we're completely safe to trade this away to the Iroquois. I'll check. No, he doesn't have any extra text. They might not even have gone with each other. Okay, I, I'm not actually in that much of a hurry to get the wheel, so we'll just do this. Uh, so iron working is higher priority for two reasons. It lets us see where the iron is on the map. Uh, doubly so as the Indians. Horses is not as high priority as iron. Ah! Uh... Let's rock the Colossus. Yeah, this is good timing for doing a wonder, right? Because we don't have maps just yet. We have all these other cities that are building here. This should be a worker. So yeah, Bangalore gets to size two. It doesn't have another grassland tile. It doesn't have any tiles that are two food. So its growth will instantly be cut in half. So in this case, we don't really benefit a lot from this city being size two. So that's why we want to do the worker here. On the other hand, a city like Bombay benefits a lot from being size two because it gives us the second grassland top. Uh, but yeah, like this is a, a good timing for, for squeezing in a wonder. And this is a cheap wonder too. I think we can get this. Okay, we'll make sure that stays happy. Let's just leave that here, I guess. Okay, this is the rest of our island. There's one other good city spot. And then, like, I don't want to hate on the, the coastal cities. Those are fine in the late game, but they don't do anything for us early on. Make sure you plant those cities, though, because if you don't, like, plant this random tundra city, the AI will. And then you'll have a border with the AI, and they will start making military threats against you and that kind of stuff. So another reason that archipelago maps are considered favorable for human players is that, honestly, all things considered, the AI is, is relatively good at launching land invasions. So the AI will just naturally stack up units in their border cities, and then if you declare war on them or they declare war on you or the other way or, or you get, they get in a war with someone else they'll move that stack from the city into your land and stack combat is like 90 percent of fighting effectively in civ 3 so the fact that the ai knows how to do that or does that by accident through the programming makes them pretty good at land invasions they suck at naval invasions though they are just the absolute worst they won't just like dump four galleys worth of units on you they'll dump them one at a time so it can be you can lose island cities that way, but your your core homeland should never be in any danger. So for that reason, having on archipelago maps, having full control over your starting island is very, very key. Make sure you set that as a very high priority to get all these tiles before the AI could start planting cities there. Um which on standard size maps should not be much of an issue. If you if you're playing like 60% water or if you're playing large or huge, you might start having issues if you spawn alone. Uh, with the AI. So uh, normally I like improving tiles that my cities can use, but here I don't want to waste the worker move, so I'm just going to road on the forest. It, it arguably wastes the worker moves, but also saves worker moves. So, Oh, so you actually never want to clear the, the tundra. So cr clearing glass, grassland forests will give you a grassland tile. It might even have a bonus grassland tile, which would be fantastic. Clearing the tundra forest will just give you tundra. And, um, yeah, so Tundra Forest is strictly better than Flat Tundra. Even if you mine the Tundra, uh, mined Tundra is only one production and one food. This is two production and one food. So you don't actually, unless you want the shields, you don't really want to chop that. I can think of some weird edge cases where you actually would want to chop the uh, the tundra forest. Yeah, so I, I guess technically it would you'd railroad faster over tundra as opposed to forest. So if you just wanted to get the railroad out as fast as possible, 
um, that would be technically better. But generally, um, yeah, don't mine Tundra. I see people wasting their worker moves mining Tundra. Don't do that. You're going to see, I'm not going to be able to do any worker moves here. Um, if the city had high food, I, if like it was just no forest at all, and I was irrigating these tiles, I could plant some forests here. But you'll never see me mining the tundra. That's That doesn't do anything for us. Um. Okay, here, at this point, I messed up, right? The city should go here or here, but I don't have any... Um, units to check, right? I'm worried about barbs, basically. Okay, so if I go back this way, we're not going to explore anything we have. We might see some iron, I guess, would be useful. Instead, we're going to go here, and we're going to suicide. So what it means to suicide is you send your boat out into the sea or into the ocean, and there's a chance you lose your boat. But if you, success, you succeed, your glorious sailors will be able to report home. And yeah... So high risk, but there's also high reward, because if you have to, like, there's there's a small chance that the AI will, like, sail over here and go meet the Vikings. There is, unless they have the Great Lighthouse, there's zero chance that they'll try to make this jump. So you can guarantee, like, if you get past those, those bottlenecks, you can meet sieves that you can almost be certain have not met each other yet. And so you can trade bo broker, which is quite valuable. So notice how I'm using warriors. Why would I ever need anything else than, other than the warrior? So the warrior is perfectly fine for killing barbs. And that's the only unit we're going to be actually running into. So yeah, we stick with the warrior. And we got the philosophy free tech. I say that confidently. We even did pottery first, but I know as long as you prioritize it highly, you will get this tech. Um, so we'll do, I don't want to do Great Library's kind of cheesy. At this point, I would seriously consider doing Great Library in your own game. You could even use Colossus as a pre-build. So what that would mean would be you research literature and then you switch off Colossus into Great Library and then you already have a ton of shields in the bank. Uh, so I'd seriously consider that if I were you in your game, but not really in this game. Um... Yeah, I also want to start settling some stuff, so it's better to do the cheaper wonder. So here I'm actually doing the granary because we have the chop. It makes sense to do the granary. We also have two worked tiles here. Uh, we have this, and we'll have a third grassland, and we'll, we'll work the grassland afterwards. We wouldn't want to waste worker moves, right? Uh, so what that means is that, yeah, all of those factors point towards a granary. And remember how I said for every eight or nine cities you build, you benefit from an extra granary? Well, it looks like we're on pace to build maybe 24 cities if we get most of these islands, right? So we could even use a third granary, hypothetically. And we might be if we're doing wonders in our cap, then uh, we, we're not building workers out of it, so we, it's a case in favor of building additional granaries. Yeah, specifically in this case, our, our cap scales reasonably well with population. Oh, I can go pop that hut soon, I guess. So there's no point in planting a city like here or here in the middle of the tundra, because it has no food. The whole point of pl planting on fresh water is that you can grow to size 7. The city has no food, it will never grow to size 7. Remember, one citizen eats two food per turn. A tundra, or a forest tundra, produces one food per turn. So the citizens that are working those tiles do not produce enough food to sustain themselves. Uh, you get two from the city center, but once that's used up, you just stop growing, or you starve. Okay, um, this city, this is the high production city, right? So we'll do the galley here, uh, and we can move in to start doing settlers, right? Again, even though these are shit cities, we still need to prioritize getting them done. Because uh, otherwise the AI might feasibly steal them from us. And of course we want to get here before the AI does. So we don't want to trade away map making, but we could to totally trade away um, philosophy. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I don't want to do... Oh, I, I guess we could do Maws. Colossus is almost strictly better than Maws, though, yeah. 
I mean, in both cases, the, the, the drawing point is the tourism gold. And because archipelago maps are relatively low commerce, the benefits from tourism gold are relatively higher. You get the same tourism gold no matter what kind of map you're playing on, but the other types of gold you get are, are a lot lower. Which it's, it's not inherently good or bad for there to be less commerce, because that affects the AI as well as it affects us. So again, Calcutta has extra shields, so that's where we build the galleys from. If a city has more food but less shields, that's where you want to do workers and settlers from. Uh, and generally, remember, food can't be corrupted, so generally the corrupt cities are the ones where you want the workers to be built. So that's why Lahore is doing the worker, right? It's low production. Maybe it'll have a second production once, uh, once this uh, tile gets worked. Of course, uh, I probably should have traded, tried, checked for tech trades first, but uh, that's decent. Okay, yeah, I see a little bit of C out there. So yeah, so suicide of chances is 50-50. So not bad. Uh, I don't actually my, my growth gets cut in half as soon as I hit size size two. So here I'm just actually gonna do this so I can get this wonder a little bit faster. So always think how can I optimize where my worker moves so that I produce wonders faster? How can I optimize my tile assignments so that I get wonders faster? So make sure that you're growing. Oh god, and do not use entertainers if you're building wonders. I've, I've seen that too many times. Like where you can just double your pr your production if you just switch off the entertainer and use like 10% on the happiness slider. Uh, but you don't. And then your wonder production is very slow. Okay, this is actually a wasted worker move here. Because uh, we have two workers on that tile. So every time you move to a worker to a new tile, you're using a move for something other than improving a tile. And you only need to do that once, right? After that, you have the road, and it doesn't consume, consume the movement point anymore. Uh, but if you do it twice, you're wasting a worker move. So ideally, you don't want to be doing that. OK, Scandinavia. Yeah, just routinely go check for, for tax. Gold here, in this case, actually. 29 gold's not bad. Pottery is a very trivial tech to be giving up. Uh, it looks like if there's something, it'll be south of us. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not actually mining this tile because it would just be lost to the despotism penalty. So I'm roading it, and, and that's it. So yeah, I go kind of short on workers for the first like 40 turns of the game or so, but then I catch up, right? As soon as I start getting those corrupt cities, uh, where the worker pretend is like the best thing you can do, I I start getting those workers out. Ah. Okay. Yeah, so this is another case of wasted worker moves. So we could do one worker can do it in three turns, or two workers can do it in two turns. Uh, you round up in terms of worker moves. So using multiple workers on a tile is, is dangerous. Let's do this. Um... So, oh, this is actually uncorrupted, but we don't need it to be uncorrupted. Because we're doing worker per, per 10 or whatever. So we're going to switch this up so we have another settler producing city. Um, we're, we're just, just so we don't have to micro that. We're going to rock that for two turns. We could rock it for, so this would... So now we're going to finish this before we grow, which is what we were trying to do. Uh, but we might as well get the two extra shields, right? Because otherwise we'll have 19 food and the one food will get wasted here. Okay. Uh, oh. This is really right across, so that will be low, uh, low corruption. So to avoid w wasting the worker move, we're going to do this, and this worker move we're actually going to waste because we want to be working useful tiles. I guess we could road to these northern cities so that they plant sooner, but it's not really important to plant those cities sooner, because those cities are garbage until they get 
Uh, harbors. Eh, I guess we'd get the harbor faster. I don't know. Uh, okay, so because we have the chop, I guess we're doing granary in Lahore. Great. Uh, if we chop this one, it'll actually go to Lahore too. So that's that's good. So despite having low production, we'll, we'll still get it reasonably fast. Okay, let's just check this out. Uh, there's a hut. There's no iron. We haven't found any iron. So we need iron for railroads, right? So it's an important thing to get. Uh, so we're going to prioritize this southern stuff. Because this is the stuff the Iroquois might contest. So this is... Uh, the chops will only go to cities within the Big Fat Cross. So Madras is not within... Yeah, the Big Fat Cross is the... You know the Big Fat... I hope you know the Big Fat Cross by now. It's... These nine, uh, these ten tiles plus one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So it notably it doesn't include, include two north, two, two east, two west, or two south. So not in Madras's big fat cross this tile. So the shields will not go to Madras. I uh, will not go to Bangalore for the same reason. And Delhi's building a wonder, so it can't go to Delhi. Even if Delhi was not building a wonder, though, uh, I think it goes in a spiral pattern. So it starts with. A city on here, city here, city here, city here, city here, etc. And then from the second ring, it will prioritize this tile right here. So even if this was not building a wonder, I'm, I'm pretty confident that it would go to Lahore. Which is where we want it to go. We want that granary. Our, we're going to need new, new Kurags at this rate. We, uh, I think this one's just going to go back the way it came. Because there's more stuff here, clearly. Uh, we're just not seeing it. Okay, at this point, we need to use the, the happiness slider. Oh, I, I fucked that. I cocked that. <laughs> um, we use the forest. Okay, that's good. We're kind of peaking here in terms of production. Like, we don't really benefit from additional population because we don't have the worked tiles to sustain to, for that population to be worth anything. Um, so at, at this point, we start doing using the forest. We start trading. Normally food is better than shields, but in this case we want the shields. Uh, yeah, we're not doing any libraries anytime soon. That's fine. Uh, if we want to, we can trade away code of law. Okay, so now we can have work tiles for a cap if we want. Ideally, we want to work tiles that we can flex. So something like this can be used by both Bombay and Delhi. But this is a forest. Uh, oh, I guess there was a go for to Bombay. Oh, yeah, we could do a granary in Bombay. Good. Okay. Again, I'm aiming for about 24 cities here. And then because we're doing wonders in our cap, we might even try like a wonder stacking game. Wonder stacking is a very powerful strategy on island maps because tourism gold is worth a lot on island maps. Oh, and the second thing is that on island maps, there's not as much of a rush in terms of the expansion phase. So it's like a big scramble for land on Pangaea maps. And land is one of the most important things for winning the game. But on island maps, it's not quite that big of a deal. Uh, we could actually settler chain here. <laughs> okay. Oh, I guess we actually want to do this. Oh, we actually could have got a tile closer. So if you, here, I'll show you guys the strat. I actually learned this very recently from the multiplayer community. Thanks, guys. I was watching one of Rabdeg's streams. Uh, that you can use the road to command to get the road a turn sooner than you otherwise will. I mean, sorry, it'll finish in the middle of the turn as opposed to end of turn. And that way you can use the road a turn sooner. Uh, so I'll show you guys with, with these guys up here. Nice. And I'll do, get some, pump some settlers out. Uh, this is going to have happiness issues, but we'll make it work. You know what? I, I probably do not actually want. 
what the fuck oh, what the heck am I doing? I, I don't actually want Oh wait, okay. Uh yeah, okay. I'm sorry, we do benefit from the granary here, I guess. This is rather big on the granaries, but the issue I'm having is that uh I got all these I I need these chops in terms of worker moves, and I don't have anything better to do with the chop. Okay, where's this going? Uh, probably want... I'm going to check down here for iron, I guess. So this would take three turns if we do the road two and then just assign it to any tile. Where are we going to want to go there? Okay, so we'll go here and we can just walk back there without losing any t uh, turns. Uh, this one I think we're just going to plant ASAP. Oh, cow. Nice. Okay. This would be a good Forbidden Palace spot, maybe. So it will be near some cities with distance corruption. It will be close enough that we don't have too much corruption to build the thing, but far enough that we have some corruption and we benefit from the localized reduction in corruption. Okay, we just ferry settlers back and forth a lot. Of double. Okay, that's oh. there might have been a better place to put that if we had scouted like this. This, for example, gets the gold too. <laughs> this is fine though. There's double cow, triple hill forest. Should be great. I I'm actually feeling some pain. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Okay, check for text again. Nothing. Um, oh, they have map making. Oh, they have map making. Okay, that's bad. Get, get what you can. Okay, so this city should be the high priority island. Uh, I could do something like this. would be on lake, I guess. So what are our best options for... And I'm not going to reload. That's not in a. It, we're not even. I don't even think we're going to get that far. Okay, we won't think about it. Yeah. So I just know ideally, this this is like a great Forbidden Palace spot on its own. This is just absolutely phenomenal, though. Something like this. Uh, something like this. Great city spots. Okay. Now we want the settler. Okay. So this one, it's done. In, so normally we'd have to wait the extra turn to use the road. If we do control U, what? Does this only happen in multiplayer? Uh, there's got to be some conditions where it will happen. Okay, I, I just at this point I just have to start taking city spots, otherwise the Iroquois are going to get them. So I plant loose to take up as much land as possible. So they're not they're not going to plant two away. So they're not going to plant here. Uh, so yeah, this guarantees all of this land. If I plant on the tip here, it only guarantees this land. So more land means more chance of having coal, which is one of the most important. Rail railroads are the biggest power spike in, in Civ 3. So uh, doing what you can early on to ensure that you can get it is important. What am I doing? Okay, this boat I'm actually just going to suicide. Great. Okay, gets us a banana. That city's not going to do anything. Yeah, I guess, sorry, I guess that tip only works in, in multiplayer. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, wait, hold up. Okay, so we're, we're going to end the, the part right here, Gandhi of the Indians. Uh, but I will, I'll load one back to see if I can make it happen. Okay. Yeah, okay, so that happened before end of turn, right? Yeah. Uh, did we actually move instantly? No, no, that didn't happen. Sorry, what am I talking about? <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I'm not sure if that it happens in single player. Anyway, good. Sorry, I've been teaching too much English. I'm sorry.
I shouldn't be saying good job guys at the end of watching my video. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching.